Hello, I'm Dr. Beth Godey. And I'm Dr. Martha Leatherman. I'm a geriatric specialist in psychiatry. And I'm a neuropsychologist, and I specialize in aging. We're experts in dementia care, and we're here to provide you some information and answer some questions that we hear very commonly about dementia and other issues in aging. Hello, I'm Dr. Martha Leatherman, and you've met Dr. Godey if you've looked at any of these others. <laughs> um, but, you know, it occurred to me that there are very few people who know as much about the neuropsychology of older people as Dr. Godey does. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, but we have an amazing resource in Dr. Godey because she really, really is an expert at understanding the intricacies of um, cognitive behavior, um, cognitive problems, dementia, aging behavior in, in older people. So I'm going to ask her some questions today about neuropsychological testing. First of all, do you get a lot of referrals from physicians and uh, other people for neuropsych testing? I do. I get a lot of referrals from neurologists, uh, but also primary care physicians, um, as well as psychiatrists uh, whose patients may have developed, started to develop memory problems. Um, they've been taking care of them for a long time. Um, but yes, and, and it's because part of the workup for dementia is a neuropsychological evaluation. And it's a piece of it. You know, I always tell patients, you know, you can take a picture of the brain with the MRI or a CT scan, but that's not going to tell the physician, the neurologist or whatever specialist, that's not going to tell them how the brain is working. Right. It's a, it's a picture. It's not the functioning of it. That's right. So if somebody is watching this today and their physician or, or someone has recommended that they get neuropsychological testing because there's a, a concern about dementia, what should they be looking for? How can they best use the information that you give them? Because I've seen your reports, and they're not only useful for physicians or healthcare professionals. They're useful for the families and, and patients, too. Well, the biggest question that I get is, well, we know that she or he has memory problems. So what is your test going to, what are your tests going to show us that we don't already know? And yes, there may be some memory problems, but with neuropsychological testing, you can actually tease out a bit what kind of information is learned better. Does the person benefit from cues and repetition or not? What other kinds of deficits may be, uh, may be showing up as memory problems? Maybe the person has difficulties with naming things coming up with uh, words and expressing themselves. So when you ask them a question about something that's happened to them over their day, they kind of stumble around and you think, boy, their memory problems are really bad. Well, no, it's the expressive speech. Sometimes it's the logic and the judgment mm -hmm. are impaired. And so the person will remember things in a particular way rather than forgetting the details. They'll remember a situation in a way that uh, makes their uh, judgment not look so bad. Uh, that gentleman was really very friendly when he called, and I've known him a long time when I gave him my Social Security number. I'm sure I can trust him. It's not a matter of I forgot that I shouldn't tell somebody my Social Security number. It's that the judgment impaired. So there's a lot more information that a person can uh, get about their loved one than just, yeah, she's having some memory problems. Well, it, and it can lead to how do you manage those problems and, and uh, optimize what the person's strengths still are. Well, what about this question? Can you tell somebody who, who you're doing neuropsychological testing on you know, how fast the disease is going to progress, when they might need more assistance? Are, are you able to, to give a prognosis? 
Well, as we say, if you've seen one patient with dementia, you've seen one patient with dementia. Everybody's different. And some of the estimates about how long uh, the disease lasts before people die, uh, those are based on sometimes um, information in terms of, well, when did the person first get diagnosed? So that some people will say, gosh, my, my mother died, you know, two or three years after she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. But then looking back, they realized that it's been probably 10 years that they were seeing problems and didn't mm -hmm. know what it was. Mm -hmm. Other people, get because they get diagnosed very early when they have very mild problems, can, can go for a long time. But sometimes people will have other medical problems that, who knows, it may be that their heart disease is more of a problem then how long will the Alzheimer's last? It's what happens after they've had a couple of, of open heart surgeries, maybe that is gonna be the thing that will cause more problems than the dementia. So if, if somebody has neuropsychological testing with you, um, what should they do with the information you give them? I presume you give them a report and written information? You know, you really need to hang on to as much information as you're given. You know, we all, we might leave uh, a doctor's office with some handouts or something and then they get shoved aside. Well, I don't have to worry about that right now, so I, I'll just put this in my desk and then you forget about it. But the kinds of resources that you're given from, by your doctor and the kinds of resources I give are uh, to think about the future, planning ahead, so that right now you might not need that phone number of that community agency, but you will. And so you really need to hang on to as much information as possible. The reports are very helpful for other physicians. Mm -hmm. If you take your loved one to another specialist, you can say, oh, by the way, mom has dementia, and so this is what we're dealing with in addition to uh, the liver problem or the lung problem or whatever. And I've certainly seen when people come in with reports, uh, neuropsychological reports, maybe two or three years after the testing was done, they will say, you know, here the, they mentioned my mother had a problem with frontal lobe or executive function. What does that mean? What, what is she doing now that, that means that? And so we're able to educate uh, later on down the line based on it too. Because, you know, you're not going to remember everything that the doctors tell you in this evaluation. The information is going to be a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But the more you have written down and, and as part of a packet for your loved one, the better off you'll be. So I think if somebody recommends neuropsychological testing, it's, it's a very important piece of the puzzle. It can be useful for uh, physicians planning, your future planning, um, placement, home assistance, legal, uh, legal planning, um, and take advantage of the, the tremendous resources that we have in understanding the brain um, so, th so that you can make the most of, of all of, of what science and technology has to offer. For more answers to questions like these, our book, The Insider's Guide to Dementia Care, is available at Amazon.com.